we'll, we'll get cranking since um, it, is, it is time. Thanks for sitting down at at least two sections. It's better than sprawling out and I'm still got people that I'm missing behind the big screen. So we're, we're gonna figure that out because um, that's, that's weird. Uh, welcome. Um, I think there are likely some introductions to be made here with some folks who are attending, attending town hall um, for the first time. And those of you, well, introductions first. Um, Mike, you want to go first? So this is Delia Rodriguez. She is going to be the new coordinator of college and career readiness, replacing Laura McCray. So running kids in college, uh, high school competitions, and just doing a lot of the K through eight connections. Um, has a lot of great experience, and we're happy to have her. Yep. Hey. So she's going to be. She's not yet. She's going to be the new. Like, when does she actually <laughs> get to be the new? Because I think you're working already, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but still, she is the new. Um, and was at a function with D155 where we had some teachers over uh, already this week. So welcome. Someone else. Okay, so I'm here to introduce uh, Cynthia Eason, who is our newest academic advisor in the Advising Center. So this is uh, uh, Cynthia's first week here. She comes to us from Mount Mary University in the suburbs of Milwaukee, and is currently finishing up uh, graduate school at UW Milwaukee. Um, we had a great pool of applicants, and I remember when I did the, uh, the reference check for Cynthia, they gushed about her, and the thing that sold us mm. is that her office always smells like cupcakes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Welcome. So, yes. I want to transfer to Missouri State when I finish here, and I'm taking a pottery class now, and I'm wondering if it'll be used for a math credit. Can you help <laughs> me out at all? Yes, it will. <laughs> oh, you'll help me, or yes, it will. So, huh, okay, haven't taken that course. Cool. Welcome. Glad to have. Glad to have you. Um, others. Is anybody here from IT? Oh, this is Bob Lynn, the new IT project manager down in. Yay! Welcome. Information, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If there's anything else I can do to help. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome. <laughs> Anyone else? So, um, yes, ma'am. Where? Who are you? And where? Why? Why are you here? Hi, I'm Catherine Jones. That's right. Is Demetrius Robinson or Linda Gurley in the room? I don't see Demetrius. I don't see no. So we can trash talk them. Go ahead. What do you need to say about them? Linda Gurley, who is our new admin assistant one okay. in career services. She comes to us by way of temporary positions in career services oh, for nice. mandated programs and Shaw. So we are delighted to welcome her in a permanent role. Fantastic. Yay, welcome. I've met her uh, um, yesterday, today. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, there's a new student success coach. Would you like to do the introduction? Uh, Oh, well, okay. yeah. yeah, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Anyone else? So for the new and for the existing, I'm going to say it now so when we get to this um, point later, um, at, at the end of the time, and we really don't have much, uh, a huge agenda today, I will ask folks if they have questions. Um, and recently, I've been getting a lot of stone cold silence. <laughs> Um, as we begin to head into an election season, right, think of your traditional town halls, which is that's what this is called. People get thrown out of town halls, right? <laughs> they stand up and they start saying crazy stuff and somebody has to invite them to leave. I don't want that necessarily, but think about if there is something that you want to ask about or discuss um, among ourselves. That's what this time is for. So I'm giving you that advance notice if something comes to mind. Um, that you're wondering about, this is uh, an opportunity for that, okay? Fair enough. Um, one of the things that we do, uh, again, for folks who are new, is um, we have an opportunity to 
Uh, just share kudos if somebody wants to do a shout out about somebody who has um, particularly um, displayed the stuff that um, we are made of uh, here. This is a chance. I will say that uh, as a reminder, we have a kudos system where you can online go on and do this. And so sometimes you know, we're just not fast on the draw at 245 in the afternoon, but you get back to your desk and you say, ah, I wish I had uh, given a shout out to so-and-so. Go online and do it online. Um, we forget about those things, but please take a moment and uh, express uh, your gratitude um, uh, to somebody. Uh, even if you're doing it here, you can do it there. But that said, anyone? Yes, ma'am. Wait, wait, wait. New people don't get to do this. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yes, please. So mm -hmm. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Wait till Mike lets you actually start your job. Then it's going to be amazing. Um, you know, we're hearing that consistently. And so things that you hear over time consistently, you tend to believe more. And, and we are being really intentional uh, about some of these things. And the people who are um, sort of carrying out those intentions, Pat and team, uh, we, we really appreciate it. Thanks for the feedback. Somebody else? Yes, sir. Okay. Job oh, that's great. Yeah. And those who, uh, Jessica's not here. She's probably downstairs working on something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, when you run into Jessica, uh, let it be known to her that folks uh, gave a shout out to her um, because it, it's always nice to hear it in person. And you could go online and do a kudos as well. You're late. Do you have an excuse? <laughs> you were, no, you were raising money for the college. That's always your excuse. Every time you're late, I was raising money. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So, congratulations. Mm -hmm. It was a great day. Thanks, for being here. Thanks to everybody who cleared out the gym. I know that that was work to come up with the rescheduling and just figuring it out. But it sounds like I was unable to be there, um, was at a wedding, but it sounds like it was a great setting uh, to do that and probably will become a permanent spot just in terms of room to roam. So, thanks, Jessica, and your team. Yeah. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. Yep. Someone else? So we like to eat back often. <laughs> yes. It, it's me again. Hey, hey you. Kudos to Pat Callis and Lily O'Connell. They have been partnering with other agencies in the county to develop a disabilities job fair. It happens tomorrow. Cool. First one ever in the county. Cool. Welcoming 14, 15 employers Fantastic. Um, to the event. Okay. There or here? Shaw or here? It is at Shaw. Okay, great. Great. Now that's about two hours away as the crow flies. <laughs> yes, walking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. About two hours. It sounds right. Cool. That's fantastic. Thank, thanks for sharing that. Amy. Great, great, great. Um, the uh, foundations involved in the um, uh, Hall of Fame or not? Do you guys, are you guys connected to that process of the selection or is that totally athletics? It is all athletics? Okay, is athletics represented here? Yeah, no, a, a great group of Hall of Famers came in um, last night and uh, were inducted uh, between uh, women's and men's basketball games. Sharp people who had exemplary careers uh, athletically, but have gone on to do uh, really cool things. Uh, a middle school phys ed teacher, we were talking about her 
getting more uh, students from Woodstock over uh, to see the Science Center. That's what made me think of it. But uh, really good ambassadors of, of the college um, who were glad they're out there talking about the school. And they had really nice things to say both about their coaches, the athletic department, but the college. So, so anybody else? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> they were so excited by what they learned at MCC cool. and they want to come back and tour some other areas. And nice. It was just great and we really appreciate it. Oh, good. Nice. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. That's wonderful. Um, somebody else? Yes, Tom. Um, for those that I'm new, I started in December, and I had the opportunity last week to go visit the Vita X locations, oh, mm -hmm. um, both here in ca on campus and then Friday night out in Harvard. So just recognize Ann Scarrow and, and her work and her volunteers. They had a classroom full of people line up last Wednesday or Thursday night at 4 o'clock to come in at 5.30 to get their taxes done. And then, I think it was 5.30 or so Friday night out in Harvard, they had people lined up there and had a group of volunteers to help in it. It just, it was impressive to me to see the work that they're doing and, and the people that need the help were, were just overwhelmed with, with gratitude. So if you see her, you know, compliment her for it because it's a huge thing that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Thank you for mentioning them. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. So I just want to say, as, as you know, I'm new. I've only been here for week three, so things are going good. <laughs> but, um, I don't know who to compliment, but I just want to say I was here on Saturday. I happened to come in and going on the tax. They were, they were lined up on Saturday. But as you went toward the cafeteria, we had the robotics mm -hmm. that was going on with the high school students in the gym. And I just want to say, you know, it was so nice to see, you know, McHenry so busy. The parking lot was fuller than what it was on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, well, what a great thing that um, McHenry is doing all this and being a pillar in the community and helping out the community in that sense. So I yeah. just want to say, you know, I'm really happy to be here. Oh, uh, yeah, and it's nice for you to notice. And <laughs> This is not hazing, okay? But one of the things we like to ask new people to do is to bring a friend who has like $3 million. <laughs> because we need, um, we're gonna need, uh, we're gonna need a second, a second gym. We're gonna need an activity <laughs> practice gym because as these things continue to happen, the demand on our facilities will increase and we want to be more available, but we still continue to want to run an athletics program. And so, um, well, next time I see Bill Gates or <laughs> <laughs> sure, yes, the fact that you know him by name that's a start, right? Um, yes, so, um, but no, it, it is exciting and it does continue to press on us in terms of how long can we go trying to make you know use of a of a gym that we're also turning into a multi-purpose, uh, you know, big space for these kinds of, of really necessary events. So that goes for others, not just you. Anybody else who's got a, a million dollar friend, see Brian. Yep. <laughs> Anybody else? On giving, I will send in uh, kudos to all of our employees. Our employee giving campaign, we had some goals. Uh, we had 33 new employees. I ah, know that's great. Great. Uh, we had 100% of our, or our president's cabinet give. We had 73 or 75% of administrators giving all record highs for us since I've been doing this. Um, we had $15,000 of additional giving. Uh, that's wow. just through the end of the year. So that's, we take the, uh, 
that's not all payroll deductions. That's one-time gifts that's given to events, and then and the payroll deductions we project that out through June 30th, our fiscal year. So just a really successful mm -hmm. campaign. Yep, so that's great. That's great. Thanks. Hopefully, not a lot of pressure. Not a lot of, you know, it seemed celebratory to me. I mean, I don't know what everybody else's experience was, but um, I, you know, I came from a place where uh, Purdue boasted a hundred percent response for United Way, which meant somebody would come and knock on your door. Um, now you didn't have to necessarily put anything in the envelope, but you had to return the envelope. But over time, that became really pressure-filled and less celebratory. Um, I, I think I saw an awful lot of people really excited to be giving um, on, on that day of giving for the college, so, yeah. And kudos to Katie, because it really kind of ran that campaign and, and was out and about and talking, and so mm -hmm. uh, she put it in the money. So, yeah, it was just, it was exciting cool. for us. And we had, during the fall, during uh, employee giving, we had so much going on starting in October, like so many events, and so that's not at the top, so to get that kind of mm -hmm. response. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I have five dollars in my pocket as I was walking by, and I said, "Here you go." For it. It's like, "Oh, come take a picture." Come oh. Take a picture. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna take my five dollars. Like the next week, I think I got a card for her handwritten. Yeah. Who paid it? Yeah. Like it went on and on about yeah. how much she's grateful for this five-dollar yeah. gift, and I'm like, "Katie, that's really nice. You don't have to do that." Yeah. Come back from the new year. Here's another one. Please take note. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again yep. for all you're doing. Yep. And, and yep. everything, I'm like, Katie, it's five bucks. Uh -huh. <laughs> no more thank you cards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Had you known, you would have given her the change, too, oh right? Yeah, like 60 <laughs> cents in change. Like, and change. <laughs> I'm going into my purse. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Some, somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a nice segue. Um, but before we segue, any uh, more kudos? Uh, yeah. To see the plastic, the Vis Queen up again this week, it's like, here we go again. Um, A218 uh, just got gutted. Um, and, and what you immediately notice is how bright that space will be once you have mostly glass in the front and then all of the fantastic windows facing into the Zen Garden, which you just didn't see because they were covered up with uh, the temporary offices. But that is gonna be, it's a big space, all designed for students um, with a different kind of vibe and feel than the Sage Center, which has become a rockin' place. Uh, but rockin' isn't always great if you just need to sit down and go over some notes, uh, or quietly meet with a, a group of uh, your, your classmates or with uh, somebody who's just trying to help you out navigating things. It's gonna have a, a student success purpose, it's going to become one of our hubs um, for our Title III um, attempt to match services to students right where they are, but it's going to be a beautiful space. And the Zen Garden will never have had a better viewing uh, than right across there. So uh, it's exciting, but more dust, right, more noise, and then, you know, right down the hallway is going to be um, noise and disruption galore, but to imagine that um, our, our uh, admissions will truly seem like an admissions. You walk in and it'll be clear this is where you start. Um, and the uh, registra registration area will be clear. You can get your work done here in a really uh, interpersonally effective way. And then to have disability services brightly identified. This is where you come to begin to look at uh, accommodations or get support. It's, it's going to be great. Um, and you look at advising and, and just what tearing out a, a brick wall does, right? Just what creating a, a, a view in there that looks less claustrophobic or cave-like, it makes a difference. And I think you're right, over and over, people are saying it just feels really different um, in here. I have gotten to be in 
a couple of our renovated classrooms. I'm trying to get into one or two classes uh, a week for the whole semester, mainly so that I can just saturate myself with our core delivery. Um, I want to uh, end this semester saying, I feel like I've you know, soaked up a little bit of our instruction, our teaching, because that's why we're here. And I encourage you to do the same, maybe not you know, as aggressively as I'm trying to do it, but get into a classroom sometime. But in our new spaces, right? I was in one of our, our new teaching spaces, and you talk about comfortable, and, and the faculty are already really facile with the technology, and so they're throwing up videos, and they're, they're, they're you know, using the, the space to the, the best uh, possible use, so it's exciting, yep. But um, with that comes dust, with, with that comes noise. Um, the, uh, the bulk starts in March, Bob. Yep, um, but A218 is going and going strong, and the bookstore also starts around then? Yeah, it starts March 23rd, but we're going to have to do the physical relocation. That's going to be a little tight because we have a very limited window, but yeah, it starts March 23rd. Which will be so here before we blink. Um, sure. But you talk about uh, folks who, again, even if they were here a year ago, right, they'll walk in. Um, come uh, the end of next summer and say, again, it, it uh, feels very transformative. That's exciting. Uh, interior signage is also going to make a big, big impact, and that begins really soon as well, Christina. Yeah, um, they were hoping to start this week. They um, are still in fabrication, so we, sh we should start seeing folks around within the next week or two. It'll take several weeks, um, building by building. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> It's going to make an impact. So those are exciting. Um, I wanted to remind folks about a couple of speaker series. Um, Christine Grella is doing um, her next part to the faculty speaker series February 20th. Um, this one is about, I forget, what's it about? I, seriously. Let's talk about sex. Oh, made to say it. <laughs> Yes, it is, and it's going to be, um, it's going to be good, um, and Christina, uh, 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 um, Christine has sort of big uh, shoes to fill because the first two have been fantastic, but we're expecting the exact same thing, um, and so if you haven't been to one of these yet, uh, it's fun because uh, people from the community come in and they're kind of blown away by our scholarship. But, our, but also our inspiring uh, instruction. So yeah, feel free to take advantage of that. Um, the Forefront series through Cal, we had a great first, um, the same uh, weekend as the people in need. Uh, we had uh, some folks come in and talk about lean farming, had a great crowd. Uh, the next one is coming up the, when is the, um, <laughs> February, tw oh yeah, the last Sunday. All right, great. Um, and um, you can go online and see the whole series, but these are some um, regionally recognized, in some cases nationally recognized speakers that we brought in just for this first uh, spring of, of doing a speaker series around the Center for Agrarian Learning. Um, so I think they'll be of interest even if you're not doing small farming or entrepreneurial farming. I mean, you were saying, Tom, it was fascinating stuff even though that wasn't exactly your, your area of focus. said they were from McHenry County, yeah. about a third said they were from Illinois, and another third was from out of state. Yeah. And yeah. it was just tremendous to be, you know, Sunday morning mm -hmm. when they were here. It yeah. was great. And that's one of the things that, that I think you'll pick up when you come to these is because they have more of a, a broader focus, you're going to run into some very interesting people doing some really interesting thing, be, th things because when you start talking about micro farming, organic farming, uh, entrepreneurial farming, recreational farming, um, there's really some fascinating people trying to make uh, a go of that and, and we're going to continue to see people from, uh, from all around. Um, let's see, were there any other, any other speaker type events that I don't want to miss? Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> I had several people send me um, in things that they wanted to make sure we noted. I'm just going to read this one the way it came in. Reminder that regular hand washing 
goes a long way in preventing the spread of germs and encouragement at this time of the season when there are lots of bugs going around. All right? So, so wash your hands. Um, this Friday night, we are getting uh, a, an award from Harvard for the Outstanding Business of the Year. The college is getting that award. And um, it is to acknowledge the, um, the great work that's been going on at Harvard for years in terms of us uh, holding classes there, but recently um, our uh, work together with the Harvard School District around our Upward Bound uh, grant um, has been um, just really exciting. I asked uh, Renee to be here um, to just share, they just said, submitted their annual report to the, fed, uh, to the feds uh, he had a lame excuse about a kid being born or something. I don't even know. Uh, you know, you get these excuses and you just really wonder. Um, Renee had a baby, right? Um, has it already come or is it about to come? Does anybody know? Yeah, little girl whose name is? Stella is a great name. Um, so Renee uh, couldn't be here, but he, he gave me just some of the highlights um, of their outcomes. The federal government has stringent outcomes when you get a, a TRIO grant. Um, they want you to do ambitious goals and then they want you to meet them. 100% um, of the graduating seniors in the academic year 18 and 19 who are in the program successfully graduated and are currently enrolled or attending post-secondary education. 60% um, of seniors have successfully enrolled. These are current seniors and are currently taking classes at MCC. So even though they're seniors there, they are applied, uh, enrolled, and taking courses as they prepare for the next stage. 40% um, have enrolled into other four-year institutions. That's one of the keys to the TRIO grant is we don't only feature um, MCC, we feature education. And so a lot of the cool things that they're doing are getting to go to colleges and universities around the region to just get immersed in the feeling of being a college student. Uh, now that includes MCC and a bunch of those folks are going to come here, um, but um, they're, they're just getting the spark to go to college. 42 of the 62 students have maintained a 2.5 GPA or better. That's about two thirds of them. Um, and that's above uh, what our, our goal was for this group. 62%, uh, 62 participants have completed their current grade level, and moved on to their next respective grade level. That's 100%. Every one of those folks are making their way through um, Harvard. The individual stories that um, Renee uh, tells me are the ones that you can sort of imagine, but then when you hear them spoken, uh, by these students, um, it, it, uh, it's touching um, because they talk about, you know, I'm surrounded by people who want me to succeed. I've never had as many people pulling for me. I never really thought it was possible um, until now. I didn't even think about college until now. Uh, my parents have always been supportive, but they haven't had really a clue as to how you even go to college. They've, already, uh, they've always said, hey, we're supportive of you going, but they have no money, and they don't really know how you do this. And so over and over, um, we're, we are enrolling first generation or low income students in this program, and they're getting exactly, exactly what they need in terms of just that complete, you know, blanket of support that says you're going to make it. A couple of things he uh, mentioned. Uh, we got a $40,000 STEM grant award to um, be, uh, in, so in 2018 we got the award. Um, 25 of the Upward Bound students took week-long classes in com computer animation and web development at MCC. They took a multicultural trip to Milwaukee, University of Milwaukee, to the museums. They stayed at a college. And, and really got an, an extra spark in terms of um, the STEM fields um, and, and careers in that area. They've been doing after school tables, they started a fellows forum just for guys to come together on a weekly basis and talk about whatever. Um, when we got this grant, we had a sense that we were gonna make our mark with this particular group of people in Harvard and we're making it. And I think that's a big part of why they're recognizing us this year. We also are doing an MCC 101 class specifically for Harvard, at Harvard, although we bring them out um, to, um, to our campus 
frequently. Um, but Laura Powers has been heading that up, and I met with them when, uh, when they were on campus. Did anybody else meet with them? They, on a Saturday, they came over, right? An amazing group of people. Um, and you, you stood around in a circle and, and introduced yourself and sort of, what do you want to do? And these weren't folks who were saying, oh, I don't know, I guess I just want to go to college. Person after person, I want to be an engineer. I want to be, you know, a doctor. I want to be a physical therapist. I want to be a chef. I want to be whatever. But they had career goals in mind, and they were bound and determined to make it happen. They were an exciting, you know, world changer kind of bunch of people, right, Don? I mean, I was blown away by their confidence. I mean, you walk up to students here just in general, and sometimes you get that sort of a hesitancy, like, I don't really know why I'm here, but I'm here. Not these folks, right? They were already very purposeful, and it's because of the work that Laura and, and others were doing to uh, get them prepared. So it's a, it's a very cool grant. We think the Title III grant is going to start having the same kind of outcomes as we implement some of those big, big goals that we're doing. So, but um, kudos to everybody who's been a part of the work in Harvard that uh, results in us uh, getting a nice little um, award Friday night. That is, I think that's what um, I had. Now, those questions that I prepped you, that this would be a great time to ask if you had them. Go. You have a question? I have a question. Can I say something about this stuff? Yes, you certainly may. So, um, I, I brought this up in the text meeting. Those of you that don't read the employee newsletter, because I know everyone does right? every day, um, it's Heart and Future will be opening Wednesday, February 19th. We are taking email reservations now. Don't email me. <laughs> email Heart and Future. Um, there is a maximum table size of six. We have to make sure you read the newsletter. But we would be happy to see a lot more faculty there. So, we just finalized the line list. Cool. And I don't know if everyone knows the night of the president, the other person who did on the opening night dinner, they did, was it the Brian Evans? 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 Oh, that's great. We got a reputation now. Which is yeah, great. yeah. Um, great food, great service by students, um, great idea. Uh, it's a delightful evening. So, yep. Uh, now, questions. Back to them questions or comments. Yes, ma'am. Where is the Oak Grove located, relocated during the construction? B-166-67. So, so the, the right around the corner from there, there, that meeting space, the, it, it, it will be in there. Yep. Um, and everything will be half off to keep the traffic going. No, it won't. <laughs> What'd you say, Christina? No, it won't. <laughs> but I just no, said it. But I just said it. I think these are being recorded too, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> it won't be half off, but there will be incentives to come around to 166.67. Yep. Um, other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, it's interesting, um, sort of yes and no. It doesn't have to go quick in terms of some of the things that were in formation that I think made us successful in getting the grant were things, initiatives that we had already started. And so we are able to report on continuing progress of uh, certain things, like guided pathways, for instance. There's a whole lot of work that was beginning and emerging that will now be culminating, but um, it already was in progress. And so it, it would be hard to even stop those things because we were bound and determined to do it. Um, other things, construction will happen sequentially, like 218. Well, we were going to do that regardless. Now we get to funnel some resources, but also purpose that towards, uh, towards that goal. Um, I do know that there will be a um, a, a, I don't know what you want to call it, a steering committee, a, a, a task force, a group of um, invested critical players brought together soon um, 
to begin to sort of get up to speed, seek input, and begin to sort of guide the next steps. And so it is rolling. Um, we want to give her a little more time. Um, and, um, but I think uh, if, we were, um, if we were talking to the feds about that particular grant right now, we would be right on track just because you know they would say, okay, so these things that you were doing, you're continuing to do and even beginning to step those up. So it's a good question because it does feel like a little bit of a, a silent period, but soon uh, when that uh, task force, that group comes together, they'll get a full dive and then begin to, to work on some of the other initiatives. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. I don't know, which, which, what's the next one, Bob? The next one is the sea lot, and that's gonna be upcoming. Um, the one project that we have at Access Roadway, the one that's gonna be funded mostly by the State Department or the CDB, that now is not gonna happen. The bids are going out in December 2020. That won't happen until May 21. Yeah. So that's gonna be a little bit of a delay, but the sea lot is good to go. You're gonna start seeing it pretty much right after May, right after graduation. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, Catherine, what's your question? Sorry, the mute button is tricky. I have no questions. You had your hand up, but no questions? That's, you're swatting flies or something? <laughs> Just wanted to make sure you were paying attention. Um, somebody else? Any qu yes, ma'am. Is there any update on the academy building? Is it progress? Daggone it, no. Um, and really, uh, not only no, but uh, just a whole lot of silence um, about every capital project, right, that is um, connected to the new budget. It seems as if, um, on a totally separate level, uh, my, uh, in a separate subject, uh, my daughter-in-law happens to be a part of a nonprofit group that does um, a lot of lobbying both uh, in the city of Chicago but then um, down in Springfield and she was in Springfield last week and everything uh, is focused on the, um, the ballot initiative for the revenue um, from the, um, what's it called, his, his um, revenue plan, the, the governor's big revenue plan that's going to be voted on. Isn't it the, the tiered tax system? What's that called? What, what's it called? Is it graduated tax? Bob, do you know what it's called? What's Pritzker's? I think it's called the graduated tax. Yeah. So she was just saying everything is focused on that. I mean, all of their work is focused on because that will determine in part how much money they need to borrow to start these other projects and what income, you know, what revenue they can count on. So um, until we hear something from the state, we are <clears throat> in uh, on a holding pattern. And it was a sort of, let's do a bunch of work just in case, right? And so we're glad because while we're not exactly shovel ready, we could, we could work ourselves into being ready to, to uh, go out to bid pretty darn fast once we know. Um, but it's a question on everybody, on every president's mind. Um, the CFOs are chatting among themselves and just aren't, nobody's hearing anything yet. That's not even a hint, right, Bob? So, no, we, 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 we wait anxiously, yeah. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Can you, um, I know numbers-wise what our enrollment looks like, can you talk about how, how you feel about our enrollment and how we're doing compared to, I think we're still doing better than other community colleges, but that feels good to you? Does it need to be Um. Well, I'd certainly be rather, I'd rather be explaining being up than being down. Um, we, we had a, a better uh, return on applicants than the previous year, and that's huge, right? To take 
applicants and turn them into actual enrollees is really critical because um, we're going to probably have less people applying over time if there continues to be less graduates, right? If there is a, a fleeing out of the state, you know, which I think we need to temper with a little bit of reality, but um, we're going to have to keep looking at that. So converting more applicants into uh, people enrolling is huge. Um, I I'm hoping that our retention efforts are, are somehow a part of, of this um, because they're critical. If you can retain somebody from the fall to the spring or the fall to the fall, the chances that they'll complete a degree, that they'll get some kind of gold med is so much more. But it's tough to track um, retention because some of the, the, the federal numbers go way back to a cohort that started several years ago. Uh, we can track fall to fall. Um, we can track fall to spring, and we really haven't made that big of an increase. Um, I'm anxious to uh, look at, uh, at fall to spring once we know, you know, um, and again, I'm very anxious to look at fall to fall to see if we're making an impact because that would be great um, to know. Um, we are up. Uh, most of that is around our dual credit. Um, if you ask Mike about how long he can continue to make it rain, there, you said perpetually. Is that was that, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you said forever. Forever. <laughs> it's, and it goes on as every school sees some other school do something, and they're like, we want in on that. Yeah. And so as new schools start yeah. seeing other schools doing stuff, the competition's there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when when might legislation change about that? At some point, the four years. Um, who are already encroaching in, in some other districts uh, to begin to offer like courses uh, may make a, a, a play in this area. We're not inundated, you know, with the uh, with the four years. Northern, I guess, could come in and say, "Hey, we're going to grab some of that market." Um, uh, right now, um, we are sustaining enrollment increases, which very few colleges, again, this year have had. Most have had. Uh, again, down springs, um, when we looked at the initial numbers that were coming in, most of that is based on um, our dual credit. In terms of our credit only students coming here, taking you know, credits, not adult ed, continuing ed, you know, or high school, we were just about even. We were up a little bit in headcount, down just a fraction in credits, but pretty much flat. Um, so, if we can keep uh, offering things to our high school students if Mike can keep doing his job and now that he's hired somebody who can run circles around him probably in terms of effectiveness they keep doing their job um, we'll we will be okay um, but it's gonna it's it's gonna be a challenge when we're doing our five-year forecasting and we're trying to look at uh, enrollment we are not looking for these kind of continuing continuing enrollment increases. It's not realistic to imagine that. Holding our own over the next five years would be completely bucking the trend that we see uh, out there in the state. It's part of why we're going to have a tuition discussion with the, uh, with our board a week from Tuesday, and probably at least attempt to make a case for um, continually looking at incremental increase in tuition. There's tons of room. Um, for uh, moderate tuition increases that will not outpace uh, uh, student aid uh, like Pell funding. We're giving out more scholarships. We're hoping to be able to recognize what's the savings in books that we are now per student, right, on average, uh, 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 being able to help students realize that would more than, you know, cover a tuition increase. And so we're going to make our case. Uh, um, the board will make their decision. Um, but without Tuition, moderate, ongoing tuition increases, even if we maintain steady enrollment, it's going to be very hard um, to keep doing the things that we're doing um, year after year. 3% um, increases in salary and wages across almost all of our uh, employee groups means that the budgets, two thirds of our budget's going to grow by 3% uh, every year for the next several years. You know, those numbers um, tell most of the tale. 
So we either, whenever we grow, we have to substitute, we have to get uh, grants or um, some sort of uh, innovation funding. Um, but our bottom line revenue is not going to grow by 3%, even if we do tuition increases year after year. So, yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Somebody else? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Hey, Don. I am um, going to the firefighters ball. Uh, it's uh, kind of like a Cinderella thing. You dress up in tuxes. Why are you asking me what I'm doing tonight? You're going too, right? <laughs> Thank you. What are you doing tonight? I don't know. What are you doing, Don? I will also be at the fire. <laughs> That's right. You will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Thank you, Don. Um, it's, a, it's always touching. Uh, family members, a lot of firefighters, EMTs uh, come from families. And so you got dads and maybe moms who are firefighters who are there to watch their uh, sons, daughters uh, graduate. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moving ceremony. Uh, I had to miss it last year. I'm glad to be back and going. Have you been to one yet? Okay, um, they let you hold the hose and they turn the water on, which is so come dressed appropriately for that. <laughs> um, there's a cash bar though, I mean, just for the record, yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a nice ceremony. Uh, you, you know, talk to firefighters. Who, there was a student I was talking to, when was that? In the hall or day, day before? Dad was a firefighter, he's here. Uh, in the program, he's going to get his EMT and then, um, and then uh, get another certification and then hopes to um, enter the fire, uh, the, the fire uh, science training program. Um, Dad's been a Woodstock uh, firefighter for some 20 years. And even though um, it gets tougher, right, uh, the number of jobs in Woodstock has gone down, uh, and sometimes, you know, you can still definitely be a firefighter across this country, but you have to move to a different town. His goal is to hang around and follow his dad's footsteps and uh, be at that Woodstock uh, firehouse. So, very impressive um, young man that I was talking to. Who, oh, no, it was at the game last night. It was somebody came up to Demetrius. Um, he's a basketball player. Uh, it's all coming back. Yeah. <laughs> what, what am I doing tonight, Don? <laughs> oh, there you are. Yeah. Was it, who, who, wasn't he an athlete? The, yeah, nice guy, um, and just happy to be happy to be here. Where you been? Just working with students. <laughs> See, that's what you quickly say. Working with a student, raising money. You always have an excuse. Um, good. Anybody else? Okay. Great. Um, have a uh, great uh, rest of your week, and thanks for coming. And welcome, new people. It's great to have you. Yeah.